Hello everyone, today I want to show you a game real briefly from the uh, Chess Olympiad that's going on right now in 2018. Uh, this game just happened to catch my eye. It's between uh, GM um, Maxime Vachir Lagrave versus Algerian uh, Grandmaster uh, Bilal Bellassine, uh who's 20 years old. He's around 2500, FIDE Master in 2011. I am 2015, and um, so he just became a grandmaster uh, this year. Uh, this is from the match of uh, France versus Algeria. Uh, of course, France won. I mean, the French team is very strong. Uh, Vasha Lagrave Legra on board one. Uh, Etienne Bacro board two, who's around 2,700. Then you got Lauren Friesenet on board three at 2,650, and then Christian Bauer uh, on board four at 2,620. This game was very interesting, though, uh, because because of uh, how it ended. So let's look at it real quick. Again, I'm not using any engine, uh, but we're just discussing just general uh, chess principles that um, I believe will help more than any um, computerized analysis. So Vachir Lagrave has white. First of all, let me say that. Um, Bellicine is uh, has the black pieces. So, already of note, uh, Bellicine plays the Sicilian, and I'm sure he knows that Vasily Lagrave is uh, probably the most um, noted expert in the Sicilian defense in the world right now. Um, he always plays the night off, and this is what uh, Bellicine uh, played. So I find it very interesting that. Uh, he plays this against Vasil Lagrav because he must know that Vasil Lagrav knows absolutely everything about the Nairov. So it's interesting to see how he plays against his own uh, preferred system. So Vasil Lagrav plays the quiet move, Bishop E2. Uh, and it's funny, uh, the old saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Because here, here's this old move, Bishop E2, that uh still popular today. And... Uh, was used to great effect in the uh, 1970s by Anatoly Karpov when he was uh, at his peak in the mid-70s. Some great Karpov games uh, with this line. E5, <clears throat> challenging the center immediately. And of course, uh, knight B3 is possible. But uh, Vacher chose to go back to uh, F3. Notice now there's a hole on the D5 square. And so... Uh, the battle ensues for the control over that square. Of course, white wants to maintain uh, control over that square. And if white can do that, this D pawn is subsequently weak. If black can win control over the D5 square, then of course he can advance and uh, totally liberate his center. So the battle ensues. Bishop E7. Another reason, too, for liberating... Uh, this uh, pawn, this backward pawn, is because it also helps improve the status of this bishop. And many Sicilian uh, night offs in this variation, when it goes well for white, this bishop often can find itself out of play for long periods of the game, if not the entire game, due to the uh, pawn structure being like this. So um, getting d5 is um, definitely a great um you know, goal for black in this uh, particular system. Knight BD7 and A4. And we see, again, this positional approach. Um, I forgot to mention, too, that when the knight does go to B3, usually white has, uh, white has a plan of playing F4. You know, after castling, of course, F4. And sometime, if uh, black lets him, white will even have F4. Five, you you see this in some older games. Again, if you look at Karpov's older games in the 70s, uh, sometimes uh, the players would allow f5 and a4 also simultaneously, and he would put that python squeeze on his opponents in the position. Game continued h6, bishop e3, and now knight g4. Thematic idea attacking uh, this bishop. Bashir Lagrave preserves his bishop. C1, bishop to C1. The knight goes back. Castles by Vashir Lagrave. 
and now knight c5. Again, this is one of the um, common Sicilian ideas when bringing the knight, uh, the uh, knight b to d7, is that the knight will often jump out to c5 at some point, and you can see the double attack on the e pawn now. So knight d2, castles, and now b4, driving the knight away. Knight e6, good square for the knight, eyeing these dark squares. So we can see the young uh, Bellicine is not afraid. He's just playing, he's playing his game. Knight c4, and we see more pressure being built up on d6, but also ideas of playing knight e3 with more control over the light squares, conversely. Uh, it's in contrast to black's control over the dark squares. So knight takes e4. So here's the old time tactic you see a lot in other defenses. Uh, like the Pyrrhic, for instance. Or even uh, some lines uh, in the Vienna. So it's like a pseudo-sacrifice. Because you yeah, have this move d5 coming up. So there it is. So black at this point is feeling good. But... He is going to drop this uh, the e pawn here, and now we're going to have a uh, imbalance in this the position. I'm sorry, he doesn't drop the e pawn, but the uh, the c pawn. I'm sorry, and we'll soon see the imbalance that I'm talking about. So knight f4 is played, and now the c pawn uh, drops. So material equality has been restored, but now we have this um, imbalance of three. To two pawns on the queen side, which can be um, very dangerous as you go towards an end game, and black has the four to three uh, pawn majority on the king side, which is great uh, right now for black, especially uh, in the middle game, and for as far as um, forming a, an attack. Queen c7, and directly, indirectly, pre <laughs> blah, indirectly pressuring the c pawn. Bishop takes f4, e takes f4. So now black's pawns have been compromised uh, somewhat. And it reminds me again of Berlin uh, um, endgame with the, you know, the pawn structure, but a little bit uh, in reverse and on opposite sides. Again, we can see that black is not afraid. Black is just playing, uh, playing his game here. Nice move here. Of course, the bishop can't capture because the uh, knight is vulnerable so of course with these two bishops and the prospect of ripping open the uh, queen the uh, king side uh, black is all in so this is why black plays f3 put nice positional uh, sacrifice there Vachel Legrave leaves it alone he doesn't even capture uh, with the pawn more pressure and you can see that black is doing okay. He's just a little bit on time, however. Knight b6. Again, this is a common theme in the Sicilian. The dark square is becoming weak as a result of the move a6. And you can see Vachel Legrave, um, you know, making a long-term investment and having that knight settle down in that square. Very annoying. For uh, black. Black takes. F takes G2. Rook E1. Notice he doesn't capture right away. He kind of uses the pawn as a <laughs> as a shield. Right? Not to open up uh, the position of his king. Rook A D8. Queen F3 now. Bishop to F6. And again, uh, props to black for just coming out and uh, not being intimidated at all. I mean, his, his he has a good position. You know, his pieces are well placed. I love his bishops, rooks, queen. All right, he's stand he's standing toe to toe uh, with uh, Vashir Lagrave. He's not he's not showing any um, you know signs of uh, intimidation here, but it's, it's, he's just going for it. Rook a c one, so protecting the pawn. That was attacked. The uh, the last piece comes out. And now, finally, king takes g2. <clears throat> B4. 
bishop to g5, harassing the rook. The bishop pair is definitely um, very, very annoying. Rook, rook cd1. And now queen f4. So um, Bellicine offers this ending. Which uh, Vashil Lagrave enters. And now bishop c4. Bishop d2 again. And this is dangerous for white. Because all the pawns are on the same uh, color as the dark square bishop. And black just simply wants to just eat up these pawns. And this is what I feel that black was looking at when he offered it. Uh, the end game to a Vashir Lagrav. Vashir Lagrav finds an excellent move here, and he plays Rook takes e6. All right, so he gives up the exchange here, and then he protects the pawn with Knight a4. So he preserves the the pawn chain, and now. Rook c8. And again, black is relentless with this attack on on this uh this pawn chain. Notice he's attacking the pawn chain at the base, right? According to those uh, old time principles from Nimzovich. So instead of um, you know trying to protect his bishop, he switches the, the attack. But Vashir Lagrave plays bishop takes a6 here. B takes a6, and rook d2. Alright, so now it's a little bit more complicated, because now, um, white has a little more compensation for the exchange. Not only has, now he has a 3 to 1 majority, but he has some good outposts for the knight. So it's not like the knight is going to be just a spectator in this. He actually has some places to put the knight. Also, black has two weak pawns here for attack that can be attacked by white. So, black definitely um, kind of let let white off the hook just a little bit there. So, rook c6, f3, and now rook e c8. Again, relentlessly attacking this uh, chain. He wants that pawn badly. King f2. Vashir gets the rook to the seventh rank. Bellicine plays g5. Rook h7. And now Bellicine has this idea of his own. So he's going to, you know, allow Vashir to go after that pawn and capture it. So rook takes h6. And this is his idea. He gives up the exchange himself. Himself. He gives it back. And again, he finally accomplishes his goal. And he figures he's going to just sweep these pawns off. And he have his passport of his own. And he figures better rook, better king. That he should be able to not only just um, restore material equality, but go ahead in material. So there it is, rook b3. H4 by um, Lagrave. G takes H4. Rook takes H4. So that allows White to protect and hold on a little bit longer to the B pawn. So now the king comes over. So now you have the same battle against the the new base of the pawn chain on B4 that was taking place against the C3. So now King D4. Um, White, excuse me, black makes it sure to stay close to to this pawn. So instead of coming, you know, coming here. And now rook c5. And this, of course, keeps the king from, um, excuse me, keeps the king from crossing over. And rook takes b4. So material equality is restored. And the game... Um, it's headed, you know, heading toward a heading toward a draw. Rook c6. That's why you have that old saying: all rook endings are drawn. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of truth to that. So rook takes a6. E5. 
Rook A8. Good move here um, by Bellicine E4. And of course, after F takes E4, King takes E4. With this king here on F2, it's easy for black just to get over and, uh, you know, capture that pawn. So, in order to maintain any winning chances here, Vashir Lagrave just bypasses and plays F4. He figures, hey, I have this rook tied up right now. And I'll just push this pawn up. And eventually this king will have to go after it. And he figured he has some winning chances. It's the only move to, to have winning chances in the position. Rook a2. And now king g3. So now the position gets a little dicey. But still should be drawn. e3 is played. f5. Rook a1. And now with the threat of e2, e1, queen. This forces white to jettison this pawn. So rook e8. Rook takes a5. And the players could shake hands here. However, uh, Bellicine is in a little bit of uh, time trouble here. And king f4 is played. Of course, with the double attack on this pawn. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Rook, rook a3 holds the pawn. And, and draws um, easily. There's there's really um, you know nothing much that White can do here to to win the game because both you know both pawns are in dangerous position and um, all Black has to really do is just just hold the pawn right now with a rook a3. Instead, he sacrifices his rook, plays rook takes s5. Obvious uh, miscalculation. King takes f5 takes place and obviously you can't play that right now. The king has to be there. So he plays king d3. And if he could move again, then he would play <laughs> uh, e2 and king d2 and then queen. But chess doesn't work like that. So king f4, double attack again. But this time without the rook and Bellicine. I had to resign and when I saw that I said I have to do a video on this this game because the the, the 20 year old uh, Bellicine played absolutely fantastic the entire game and um, you know and then just did that and um, it happens to the best of us but wow you know that was just uh yeah, that was that was brutal. So um, anyway, that's it for this video. I hope hope you enjoyed it. Um, please comment, like, subscribe. Check the links that'll be um, you know in the box um, below. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.